my name's James, I'm from Rootna. This is my 1971 HG Kingswood. Probably when I was about 16, I think I saw Steve Loder's UC Smoke, and I don't know, just fell in love with it, so I had to have one. So the original plan was to get a original one, just put a nice little motor in it as a bit of a driver. But um, we ended up getting a pretty rusty one, which needed a full restoration sort of thing. So yeah, and this is what we end up with. The first car probably was, it was a VN Commodore. It was a bit of a skid pig when we got it, so I think the pod filter came out the bonnet and all the typical 18 year old VN Commodore things we did to it. But um, yeah, it had a bit of fun in it. When I was 18 I bought a Mitsubishi Triton and did a bit of forward driving and mucking around and then stepped it up to a Ford Courier. So this is really the first sort of flash car that I've had. I bought the car, the HG, in 2007. Uh, I think I was 18 years old when I bought it. And yeah, she was a rust bucket. All the quarters were gone, the doors were gone, front guards. I think there's only one original door left on it and the bonnet. I started the car basically the day after we got it home. Um, it brought it home at night time, so the next morning we were into it, took it all apart, numbered everything, put everything in glad wrap bags. Got all the bodywork basically done. Me and Dad did a lot of the rust repairs in the, around the window, in the guards, in the rear quarters. Handballed it to me brother for the panel beat inside of it. Uh, I had to choose a colour. It was always going to be blue. And then I think a week, the weekend before we were going to paint it, I said, nah, it's not going blue, it's going red. Best decision I ever made because I don't like blue, so I don't know why I was going to paint the car blue. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with how the red came out. had to organise the engine obviously, so the engine's got a 350 Chev in it. It's got an Eagle lightweight crank, Eagle I-beam rods, J flat top pistons. Uh, the engine builder had a two-speed power guide and we did a bit of homework and that was going to be best for us. Set of cast iron 882 heads on it. The main reason for the heads was we did all the bottom end and I had everything together and it came down to the heads. And at the time, the money was running a bit short, so we just got a set of uh, cast iron heads just redone and um, bolted them on, and the plan was to put alloys on it down the track. The motor, after it was completed, we dynoed it, and it made about 390 horsepower and 390 foot-pound of torque, so it was a good pokey little engine, but it's, it was made to cruise, it wasn't made to drag or anything, so it's sort of what I really wanted with it. So we've got a set of 18 by seven on the front and 19 by 8s on the rear, they're an intro billet V-rod rim. So the interior, I always sort of wanted it that colour. It's a buckskin um, vinyl. It's not a leather because of the price and it is easy to maintain. Really happy with it, never had a problem with it. Had to have a bench seat in it because obviously some nuts you want to fit as many people in the car as you can. So we've had about 10 people in the car I think is the most by the time you throw a few in the boot. It's good for that, it's good for cruising and all the boys love it. So. Bit of fun. With the boot, uh, once Owen called me up to say, you're going to Motor X, we sort of stood around the car scratching our heads for a while, saying, all right, we really got to finish this thing. I said, the main thing is I have to be able to put my beers somewhere because the boys won't be happy if we can't put beers in the car. Eski was probably the first thing that went in there and then we built the boot around that. The build probably took from the day we got it home to the day it was registered about four years, I think. Uh, that had a lot to do with time but also had a lot to do with money being a uh, carpenter apprentice, didn't have much money at the time so it actually worked out alright really, at the time it was a pain in the ass but I sort of just, yeah it was built for a Sunday driver but I think building the car was probably the funnest bit of it which at the time I just wanted it to be over but now that it's over you sort of want to be back there working on it again. And once it was regoed we did um, a few local shows like New America Show us your wheels and your roller and a few local ones like that. First big show would have been Melbourne Motor X and then uh, did Summer Nats and then Sydney Motor X and then Summer Nats 29 the year after. So. Street Machine, that was another big, big thing. I had a lot of fun doing that shoot and excitement when the magazine came out and all that sort of thing. Yeah, there's been a lot of good times with it. I'm pretty happy with how it is. It's reliable, it's a good cruiser, um, does everything I wanted to, smokes the tyres when I want to. It's been a big part having the family involved, I think. I think there's a lot more satisfaction out of knowing that they've helped you do it rather than just paying someone to do it. To have Dad help me do all the rust and that stuff, the car wouldn't be anywhere 
it'd still be sitting in the shed as it was if he hadn't helped me. And then for my brother to panel beat it, obviously saved me a hell of a lot of money and sort of meant something that we all had an input into the car, like we could all stand back and say we all did this sort of thing together.